It's a very important conference because it brings together practitioners, police officers and prosecutors from the national level and from the international organizations, all specialized in dealing with war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. So it's a very important opportunity to exchange uh, experiences, to determine uh, best practices, but also to see in, in what way Interpol, as uh, the leading police organization, can uh, even more support national efforts in bringing uh, war criminals to justice. We all know that um, information management and information exchange is, is a key issue uh, for all investigations. Uh, for example, if we, we see at, the, at our tribunal, we have in our database nine million pages of documentations in relation to the different uh, wars in the former Yugoslavia. Now, this information has been used in relation to our 161 cases we have conducted uh, in, in The Hague. But of course, there are hundreds of cases still to be conducted in the countries of former Yugoslavia. So we have uh, looked for ways to make this information available for investigators and prosecutors in Serbia, Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. So we, we put in place a, a mechanism, um, remote access to parts of our databases. We, uh, put into our own team liaison prosecutors from Serbia, Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina to, to access directly those databases. And what we have seen over the last 12 months is that 200,000 pages of documents from our own databases have been used in national proceedings and, and, and this is quite important. Interpol is, is, is a global player in, in many areas uh, in relation to organized crime, in relation to corruption, in relation to violations of international humanitarian law. Um, uh, regulations. So in, in, in this uh, sense, Interpol has very much a, a bridge function for, for all of us. As I could explore at the conference, there are of course very important links between corruption, organized crime and the cases we're investigating, which are uh, war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. So Interpol can here be a kind of interface between those who are mainly dealing with organized crime cases and those who are in, in conflict zones dealing with mass atrocities. In my um, address to the, to the members of, uh, of the different participants in the conference, I, I put the emphasis on, on two issues. The first one was really the link between organized and corruption on one side and um, war crimes, crimes against humanity on, on the other side. Uh, what we have seen in the former Yugoslavia is that uh, prior to the start of the conflict, uh, the Milosevic regime put systems in place to, to generating a lot of, a lot of money, uh, allowing to, to finance the, the future war. We have seen during the conflict that there were very close relationships between organized crime groups um, and uh, government officials facilitating trafficking offenses in relation to arms trafficking, uh, cigarette smuggling, trafficking in human beings. So there are uh, quite, quite important links. Um, we have seen that during uh, the, the conflict, um, special units were, were created, uh, composed very often by, by regular criminals. And they were very often used to commit the worst atrocities because, of course, they have no uh, limitations in terms of, of violence using. So what we have seen in, in Bosnia, that um, Serbian authorities from Bosnia were using those uh, units uh, for ethnic cleansing operations. Uh, we have seen after the end of the conflict that a number of those persons um, are very well-known criminals today in international criminal networks. So the point I wanted to make at the conference is to say we have to tackle both simultaneously. We have to work on organized crime corruption cases simultaneously with the work we are doing. Having said that, international tribunals, we have a limited jurisdiction which is really limited to war crimes, crimes against humanity and, and genocide, and we can ourselves not prosecute for trafficking offenses. Therefore, uh, this, this exchange is, is very, very important, and therefore um, Interpol is providing an important platform. The second element I have addressed is really the biggest challenge for international tribunals, which is the arrest of fugitives. Um, the majority of my colleagues from the International Criminal Court, from the Rwanda Tribunal, uh, from the, the uh, special, special Tribunal for Lebanon, have as main challenge to see the remaining fugitives arrested. At our office, we, we are in the fortunate situation today that for the Tribunal for Former Yugoslavia, all our fugitives have been arrested. The last one last year, um, Mladic and Hadzic. But it has taken very, very long. It has taken 18 years between the issuing of the first arrest warrant and the arrest uh, last year. Um, as an office, we have put in place a tracking team, a tracking unit, 
to, to really look for the whereabouts, working with national intelligence services, national police services, analyzing information coming from different sources to, to identify places where, where fugitives were hiding. And this is for sure a field where Interpol has been of assistance in the past, but where we would like to see Interpol playing even a, a bigger role as international tribunal, we don't have our own police force, we don't have our own army. We have very limited possibilities in, in collecting intelligence and police information. And Interpol as a global player um, can of course be and should be even more in the future a, a key partner and key player in helping international tribunals and national authorities in having fugitives arrested.